Hello, sports fans. Welcome to the MVP Sports Studio tutorial for Football Template 20. At MVP, our goal is to provide you with the professional templates, tutorials, and tools you need to celebrate the achievements of your MVP. I'm Steve Fuller, and I'm excited to bring you this tutorial. First, let's get prepared. You will need the typeface Ponter and Dirty Ego from Defont.com and Wanted M45 from 1001fonts.com added to your system fonts. They are totally free fonts. You should have an image of your athlete and logo with the background removed. We have tutorials that walk you through the process, so if you don't have that prepared, please check those out first. And if you do, we can get started. So right now we have open the football template number 20. And we also have the layer window open. We've selected the layer tab. Make sure you've got that ready. And we've also got our color window open up here. And as well, I have opened in Photoshop a, the athlete. And we're going to click on him up here. And you can see we've got him all prepared. His background has been removed. And I also have opened the logo that I'm going to put in uh, to replace uh, the one that's there. Okay, so let's go back to 20 football template. All right, here we go. Now you'll see in the very top layer is the athlete group. And if you open that up, all you have to do is click on the little arrow and it'll open it up. And inside the athlete group, you'll see a layer called replace athlete here. Okay, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we'll select athlete group and I'm going to Go over to my uh, athlete tab, click on that, and there he is. He's ready to go. What I'm going to do with him is I'm going to click and hold down the left mouse button, drag him up to this tab, the football template 20 tab, and while I continue to hold down that tab, I'll bring him into the template and then let go. So let's give that a shot. I'm clicking and dragging. I'm still dragging him up to the football template layer, bringing it back down. Now I'm letting go. And you can see we've got him right where we want him. And we're going to look over at our layers. He is within the athlete group. And the reason that's important is because the athlete group has this layer mask. This layer mask acts as a bottom edge in this particular template. So no matter where we put him, he's still in that poster. Okay, you can kind of see where that's happening. All right, so we're gonna put him right about here, I guess. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. And now you may want to scale or him up or down. And so we're gonna just go up here to edit and you'll see free transform. If you click on that, you'll get this nice transform uh, box. And by moving these uh, control handles back and forth, you can enlarge or uh, scale him down. I'm gonna go with about what I had and now hit return or enter. That's looking pretty good. Now to move him uh, just a little bit, I'm going to use my arrow keys. So I'm going to go up a little bit and over a little bit, up a little bit. And that's kind of where I want him. Great. So now if I go back over to my athlete group and to the layer that says replace athlete here, I'm just going to turn him off. All right, we've got him in place. The next layer to work with is our type group change all. So if we open up that group by clicking on this little arrow, we'll see a number of different type layers. The first two have to do with the athlete's name. Okay, so we're gonna change that, but in order to change the name, 
we're going to need the type tool. Actually, before that, I'd like to enlarge this a little bit, zoom in. So I'm going to click on the zoom tool down here towards the bottom of my toolbar. And I'm going to click a couple of times right inside this type. Great. Now I'll go over and I'm going to select the type tool. Just click the T. Okay, now I've got my type tool and I want to double check that I've got my uh, name layer selected. In this case, it's the Conrad layer. And then I'm going to click here on the type. Now you'll see that I've got a line under the name and I've got this little blinking uh, line that's also going on. It's on the left of the D. I want it over here. Now I can click and drag across the entire line of type. And we'll change this to um, the, the name that you're working with. I'll just put in another name here. I can type right in. There we go. Now, I still have my type tool active. That's why I'm still getting the blinking cursor here. And I have to get out of the type tool. In order to do that, I need to go up over to my toolbar and actually click on a new tool. So in this case, I'll just choose the move tool. And now I'm out of the type tool. All right. Now I'm going to change the next layer. And as I go to change this next layer, I want to remind you as you go over to pick the type tool that it's not unusual to sometimes miss uh, when you click and click out here too far. What will happen is you'll get a whole nother layer of type. That's not unusual, that happens. So if that has happened to you, go ahead and click on the move tool get yourself out of the type tool and then go to that new type layer and just drag it down here to the trash. Get rid of it. Excellent. So now I'm on the first name and I am going to go get my type tool. Click on the T. Make sure I've got this selected. Yep, it's looking good. I've got a line right underneath him and I'm going to click and drag and now I can just type in a new name. Excellent. Now I have to get out of the type tool. So I'll go up and click on this move tool and I'm out. Excellent. The next line is the location. I'm just using the scroll wheel to go up here to the top where the location is and I'm using the space bar. I'm click, I am pushing down the space bar. I've got the little hand icon just to get that centered a little better. So now here is the location line. I'm gonna go over and this time, instead of clicking on the T, I am just going to uh, click on the T in the keyboard. That's my little shortcut. And you can see I have selected, clicked right just to the right of the N. I've got this selected. Now I can move across the whole way. Boom. All right, now you can put in your location. Let's say this is All right. I've put in a new name. You of course would put in the name of your team. Now we have to get out of the type tool. So I'm gonna go over here and click on a new tool. Great. Now, next we wanna change the name of the team. So I have clicked on the Raptor layer. I am going to hit T on my keyboard and I'm going to click right next to this S. Yes, I've got it. I see the line underneath it. I've got my blinking cursor. Now I will click and drag right across here. And I'm gonna change the name to Cougars. Excellent. 
Now I have to get out of the type tool. So I'll go up here to the move tool and I've got the Plainfield Varsity Cougars. And of course, you've changed that to whatever your team is named. Now, the next thing, the athlete's number. I'm going to move this over to the left a little bit. I'm going to push down on my space bar. Just move it over a little bit. I've got 40 selected here in my layers. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and click just a little bit to the right of that O. Excellent. I've got that selected. 40. And now let's change his number to whatever the number should be. We're going to go over to our move tool and actually click on it to get out of our type tool. Okay. Now I've included um, a line of type down here and you can change this to whatever you would like. You can turn it off. You could put something else about the team in here. It's totally up to you. For now, I think I'll just leave it like it is. So I'm going to use my scroll wheel and come back up. Now let's zoom out. Let's go over and get our zoom tool. And we're going to hold down Alt or Option, depending on if you're using a Mac or a PC. That'll change to the minus icon. And we're going to just click a few times. All right. It's looking good. Now, what's next? Well, next we have a couple of layers to change the color. And so we're going to go to this poster layer. And right now it's closed, so we want to open that up. Now, if you come down here to where the layer that says Team Color 1, you'll see that within that group, there is a team color layer. All right. So all we need to do in order to change that first group of colors is we're going to go over here and choose a color. There's a couple ways you can do this. One is to take, <clears throat> come over here and get your eyedropper tool. What the eyedropper just lets you sample a color. So in this case, we're going to click here, maybe here, see what kind of colors we're getting. That's one way to do it. Another way is to come over here in the color window and kind of pick a color of our own. Either way works fine. Once you've got a color that, you've li that you like, make sure your team color layer is selected. Then we're going to come over here and get the paint bucket tool. And all you're going to need to do is just click on your image. And now it has changed to blue. Now this blue is going to be affected by this layer mask. And you can see that it is also affected by the poster group because it's within it's a group within a group and it's affected by that as well. So that's how we get some of those edges in here that look like make it look like the poster's old and has ripped away or or something like that. We're going to do the same thing a couple of layers down. It says team color number 2. If you open up that group, go to the team color and we already have our paint bucket selected. We're just going to click and we've changed that to blue. Nice. But it still has, it still um, is affected by all of the various layer masks that are uh, on top of it. Again, we have a group within another group. You don't really need to worry about that right now because uh, that's just the way we make this work. All right, so now we have the colors changed. We've changed the type and we've brought in the athlete. And at this point, you could stop right here if you wanted to and go with this. This is a nice look. I'm going to show you a couple of other things that you can add to this if you like. Let's go to the, uh, t not the type group, but the logo group. Okay, now if you turn that on, this is an option for you. Put a couple of logos in back here. Open up the logo group. 
you'll see we have two logos inside this group. So I'm going to go to my blue cougar tab, click on that because I've prepared a blue cougar. The background has been removed. I'm going to do the same process as before. I'm going to click and drag this up onto the football template tab and then bring it down and then release. So I'm going to click, move this up to the football template tab, and I'll bring it over here. Okay. Now, doing it that way has put it within the logo group. That's exactly where I want it. And now I need to size it. So what I'll do is go to Edit and come down here to Free Transform. And all I'll need to do is click and drag on these handles to make it smaller. Now I'll move it over here. And it's still a little big, so we'll just make it smaller. Okay. And move it down here. Excellent. That looks good to me. I'm now going to hit return or enter. Great. And I can turn off my logo placeholder. Great. Now you can see that because it's within this group, there's a layer mask here that's affecting it, making it look a little older, kind of uh, a kind of look to it. And now I want to duplicate that and move it over here. So I'm going to right click on that new logo layer, choose duplicate layer, and you can name this whatever you would like. I'm just going to keep that layer to copy and all I need to do now is move him. I'm going to hold down shift and move him over here. Excellent. Except it didn't take, so I need to do it again. I don't know why that didn't take. We'll move it over. Let go. Now I was holding down shift the whole time. And uh, now I need to move it over just a little bit. I'm using the right arrow key. Great. Okay, now we can turn off logo placeholder copy. And we've got a couple of logos there. Now that's totally up to you if you like that look or not. Now I'd like to show you an option of an effect that you can use on the athlete layer. Got that selected. And we're going to want to go up to filter up here on the top. And we're going to go down here to Filter Gallery. And I'm just scrolling up, taking a look at my athlete. I am actually going to zoom out. And when we are in the Filter Gallery, we come over here to this negative and plus in the lower left-hand corner. And I'm just going to hit the negative just to get more image of my athlete. Depending on how your athlete comes in, you'll either zoom out or zoom in, of course. Now, the, the effect that I have on this right now is called poster edges. The reason my came up under poster edges was just a little bit ago I was experimenting with this and had tried a few things, and so that's what came back up. Yours may be something totally different. So what you'll want to do is to go into this artistic group and hit the little arrow key so that it's opened up this whole artistic group. Then click on Poster Edges. Poster Edges gives it kind of a posterized look. And what that means is that an area that graduates evenly from a white to dark shades gets broken up. That's not uncommon of older style posters or that kind of thing. Now, some of the, spe the uh, parameters that you can change are over here. And uh, right now I've got an eight, a one and a two, eight for the edge thickness, one for the edge intensity, two for the posterization. 
If I take posterization, for example, and go down to a one, it really makes it uh, pretty, pretty harsh changes from light areas to dark areas. But that might be uh, a look that you like, and that's very fitting for where you want to go. Uh, for what I was doing, I liked uh, two. It had it broken up. Um, edge intensity, that adds um, more black in the edges and some more what looks to me like a black grain, actually. And I have very little of it in mine, but depending on your image, uh, will that will uh, affect what looks best, actually, because you might want to make some changes in these settings to get a better look, depending on your photo, of course. So right now I'm going to, that's one possible way to go. Another one that I like is called dry brush. Dry brush is up in this upper right hand corner. You can select that. And that starts to give it more of a look as if it was painted. Now the settings that I gave it were 7, 5, and 2. 7 for the brush size, 5 for the detail, and 2 for texture. To get that kind of, uh, as just it's breaking down those uh, transitions into a kind of a pattern. That can look really nice too, depending on where you're going with it. Um, another one is paint, paint dabs. If you click on that, another kind of a, a nice look. They're all kind of uh, interesting. For this one, I've been using a uh, brush size of 14 and a sharpness of 5. But again, play with these. See what you like best. And uh, I'm going to go back to the poster edges and, uh, and to get out of that and to apply this filter, you would hit OK. If you don't like any of those, that's great too. You just hit Cancel. But I'm going to hit OK. And that's changed the look of uh, my image a bit. Make it look a little more uh, older perhaps or kind of going in with the look and feel of this poster. So that's about it for the variations that you can utilize in this template. The next thing that you would do, of course, is save your work. So in this case, I want to do a file, save as. Great. And I'm going to call this the Cougar Poster And his number in this case was 99. We'll do that. I still have it. It's in Photoshop. We'll do a save. Okay. Photoshop is saving over here. Excellent. And now we're going to save a JPEG copy. All right, let's just go up to File. We'll go to Save As. And this time we'll use the same name, but we're going to go changed from Photoshop to JPEG. Great. Hit save. And OK. Make sure it's good and high. OK. It has saved that pretty quickly. Now we want to open that JPEG file. So we are in File, Open. We're going to the Cougar Poster 99 JPEG. And we'll open that up. taking a second to open that up. There we go. Now I'm going to look at my tab here. It says Cougar Poster 99.jpg. Great. So now I will go up here to Image, Image Size. Now this is going to give me some good information. All right, now, right now my image is 16 by 20 inches at 300 dpi. So this is ready to make a print that's 16 by 20 inches. Say that's way too big, and I only want to make it 10, 8 by 10. I'll just type in those numbers, and it's 8 by 10. I would save it out, <clears throat> and then I'm ready to have it printed at 8 by 10. If I'm going by that 16 by 20, 
than originally what I had was perfect. So I'm going to cancel. So depending on what your output is, that's how you will change the image size. So that will get you prepared to send it out to a printer. All right. That's about everything that you need to know to get this ready to print. Um, I just appreciate you watching. Again, if there's anything you, um, else that you need or would like to hear about, please let me know in the comments. And if you have purchased this and you have um, used your athlete and your team and you've customized it, we would love to see it. Just go to our Facebook page and uh, upload it there. We would love to see what you've done with this. Uh, thanks so much, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.